Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with another Rome 2 battle for you and look at it, the sun is shining, it's a glorious day and we are ready for some blood and battle and we are looking at the Italian mercenary swordsmen to start with obviously from Carthage, a huge host of these men uh, player here is bringing a lot of, uh, uh, quite a lot of them and Iberian swordsmen as well, he's bringing all the mercenaries out it would seem obviously as Carthage you would um, so we'll quickly go look at the two factions. We have a 2v2. Uh, we have Carthage and we have Epirus uh, against two Macedonian armies. So it's some weird coalition going on here to either invade or attack or defend against Macedon. Who knows? Some weird scenario has been formed. But um, going back to what the uh, Carthaginians have, they have some Libyan infantry, as I mentioned, the main force of any Carthaginian army. We also have some Carthaginian hoplites, um, I think three of them, they're, they're okay, they're pr not the greatest spears in my experience, but they'll hold the line. Um, also got mercenary Balearic slingers and mercenary Cretan archers, so the two, obviously a mainly mercenary army here by Carthage. So, uh, and to top it all off, they've got mercenary Iberian cavalry, um, they also have Carthaginian cavalry and some Numidian cavalry which are, and then their general over here as usual we'll go quickly go over Epirus as well we'll play it while uh, Epirus is moving up <clears throat> I'm so sorry my voice is dying today I have been I've just don't know why it's just been terrible today and I do apologize guys um, skirmish cavalry uh, and Tarantine cavalry over here by Epirus Make it, I guess go for an early flank, I guess kind of go for the general because for some reason the general for this Macedonian army is way out in the open. He was like, I guess maybe didn't deploy in time or just forgot to deploy him in the right spot. But we've got uh, Macedonian citizen cavalry now going out to uh, combat them. Um, I, hopefully the Epirus player has skirmish mode on so these uh, citizen cav can't catch them. Surprise, Macedon did bring more expensive and effective cav because... I mean, they have the capability to bring some really good cavalry that could change the battle. And as you can see down here, they t I'd say Macedon slightly is uh, worse off on the balance of power, but only just. But anyway, we'll quickly go over what Epirus has got. They have uh, hoplites, simple as hoplites. Uh, mass uh, mercenary Samonite warriors and uh, mercenary Italian swordsmen like their uh, Carthaginian uh, Allies, um, this is just a battle of mercenaries, it would seem. Mer more mercenary Italian swords, hoplites, and militia hoplites. Interesting choice to bring militia hoplites, not the greatest, but um, I guess maybe just needed for just extra numbers. Like, who knows? Maybe has some spare cash. Here's mercenary Italian cavalry, um, Hellenic royal cavalry, uh, and that's about it. Oh, and throw our spears up top, of course. Um, Mastodon, I assume, has brought a lot of pikes. And hoplites, and they have brought a lot of hoplites, and they brought a lot of pikes, um, and they also have brought uh, Rhodian slingers, a uh, very good slinger unit. Uh, also mercenaries, of course, loads of mercenaries in this battle. Militia hoplites, uh, which is an interesting choice. He brought three, four units of them. One, two, three, four units of militia hoplites. Uh, I mean, you could probably afford to bring just two better units of hoplites. Probably three. And he's brought Aspis Companion Cavalry. This player has, uh, this Macedonian player has brought better uh, cavalry. He's also brought his own skirmish cavalry, a mercenary Thracian cavalry, uh, a mercenary Thracian Peltast um, out here on the right as well. And it truly is just a battle of that um, of mercenaries. More hoplites over here in this army. Thoros spears, um, hoplites, Thoros spears. Yeah, a good mix of hoplites and Thoros spears for infantry. His general is Royal Peltast and slingers. So. Well, quickly, oh, there we go, straight into the action. Citizen Cavalry strangely charging, and I presume trying to catch up those slingers and have run into hoplites, and they're now in a lot of trouble. And uh, mercenary Italian cavalry look like they've been sent in to deal with them. Uh, all these actually, no, no, these might be the Hellenic Royal Guard uh, cavalry of the uh, of the, the generals. Uh, but I mean, look at the amount of pillum going in here, just killing all. That cavalry unit has been massacred. I think that there might be one guy left, maybe. Maybe two, but I mean they got mass good. Epirus did very well there. I mean taking a fair amount of losses himself. I presume quite a few from friendly fire, but um, we'll find out. Over here, Mastodon again is also uh, going after 
the cavalry here needs mercenary Iberian cavalry fighting the Aspis cavalry and now there is mercenary uh, not mercenary I keep wanting to say mercenary because there's so many mercenaries in this goddamn battle but it's actually the hot plate Mer militia hot plate going in to help support are they going to get caught by the Carthaginian hot plates doesn't look like it okay mercenary Italian cavalry have somehow got round the rear here for Epirus and are attacking I presume again going after the missile units but they're being swamped by Macedonian cavalry um the lines now are starting to draw to a front. Strangely, which is very silly, I think, sending in Militia Hotplate on their own just to die. I mean, it's just not worth it. Oh, God, but they are getting killed off quite quickly. Um, pikes here. Again, I mean, Carthage might as well just stand here. This is a big no-no. These pikes need to go in. Uh, future for players that are learning, um, send your pikes in now. Don't just leave them here because they're just going to throw jabbies like this the entire time. And that's just, uh, and look at this, Hellenic Royal Cavalry now also going to come into the rear, so we'll watch this charge. This is going to be beautiful. I think these uh, Hellenic Royal Cavalry also have just dealt with, uh, maybe they're not, maybe they're not, uh, have just dealt with the Macedonian general. They sent a nasty charge at him, as we can see the aftermath there. This Macedonian player, um, again, also playing quite passive. He's just happy to stand in front of the enemy lines. He sent in a few here, some hot plates and his general. Sending his general in, I could just get his general out to safety him. It's pretty battered. 45 left. Yeah, these guys really just need to get out. I mean, I don't even know if the general's alive. He may well be dead. But, I mean, Epirus doing quite well and just holding here. The both players, Carthage and Epirus, um, committing minimal troops, but holding... Like, look at this. Committing hardly any troops, but they're tying up two units. I mean, and it's still combat even. These Carthaginian hoplites are doing fairly well. And they've not inflicted many damages, uh, many deaths, um, but that's fine. They're just holding them up. These cavalry are doing damage in the rear. And well, here we go. We're going to have a charge now into the back of these pikes. Very nice. That is going to be uh, quite a few dead pikemen now. And they'll probably not stand much longer because pikes don't like being uh, attacked in the rear. And there we go. Just break as we speak. Um... Losing decisively. These pikemen are probably next on the list. They're also losing decisively. They may break as well. They're pretty shaken up. Um, okay, so these Berleric Slingers got caught out and someone got killed here. Um, I'm not really sure. I'd say Ma uh, Carthage has won the cavalry battle. I mean, if this is all that Carthage really, uh, Macedon really has left of his uh, cavalry, he's in a bit of trouble. And it does look like it. He's, it looks like this could break anytime soon. Uh, pretty good charge against Mercy Thracian Warriors. These guys have got very vulnerable to cavalry charges as they've got like, well, they've got no shields and they've got very little armor. They're just a shock unit and hopefully those Iberian cavalry really need to get out of there because they, the longer they do stay in there though, those swords will start swinging and do some damage. Epirus here, just holding the line. He's holding the line against uh, against uh, Mastodon. I was, trying to, I was about to say Carthage because they're all in white, but no. Um... That is not the case. I mean, they're not really even really fighting. They're just in, like, hot plate walls. They're just looking at each other. Like, this whole formation, they're not actually engaging. Here he goes. Now he gives the attack order. No. Again, they just move inches forward. Well, okay. He, the Mastodon player here is kind of, like, screwing himself over. He needs to send in these troops properly. Actually get some flanks going on. Like, this unit here. This Thoros Spears. This Thoros Spears here needs to attack in the rear here against these hot plates. This one... Needs to go and help and like get around the back of this Samonite warriors, or go and like in here and kill these mercenary Italian swords off, like because look at what they're doing to these poor uh, Italian swordsmen are doing to these hot plates. This is 146 men, and they're on oh, no, a that's 116 still. They're wavering. 146. They will probably be wavering pretty soon, but I mean it's turning into a bit of a decimation. Looking at the balance of power, it's not looking good. This Mastodon player is absolutely well finished, really. I mean, his general's about to die, the shield bearer unit, and his hot plates are in, in some trouble. His pikes are all but gone. I think they are all gone. It's just hot plates left. And I mean, Carthage, again, here shouldn't be just blobbing up. He should be trying to get around, surround them. In this scenario, he doesn't need to worry about it. He can just blob up. But I mean, to break units quicker, if you're in a closer battle, you want to just surround them and break them quicker. Like, because I mean, they are hot plates. They're pretty standard but they'll hold for a long time especially in hot wall even with a dead general so now Carthage is able to come over here to help Epirus but I don't think he's going to need it um, he has got some breaking hot plates here I mean Macedon is just 
been quite ineffective. His general's dead here as well. I presume those Royal Peltas have got focused down by all these uh, Rodian Slingers. And they've just, they've won the cavalry battle. And nine times out of ten, if you win the cavalry battle, you're probably going to win the rest of the battle. Um, these poor hot plates are probably going to die. This seems like it's going to be a bit of a success. These Thoros Spears finally got committed to surrounding these hot plates. So he did that eventually. And these Thoros Spears are engaging his Italian swordsmen. But it's a little bit too late. They needed to go in when these, like, other units were still alive. Poor hot plates here. God, they're just getting focused down as well. So that's them gone. Um, Epirus here with another solid charge into the back of these uh, hoplites. Um, I just, I can't see, well there is no way out now, I think it's all over. It's surely all over. Actually these are under their own hoplites, they charge that. What fools! Get around the other side, attack them that side. Don't charge your own men, just asking for problems. Um, Epirus' general is pretty beaten up, he probably doesn't want to commit him anymore, but I mean, there isn't much of a risk, I guess. Poor, uh, I mean, poor Macedon, both players, uh, they just kind of, they're a bit too passive in the case of, like, they're not even attacking. Like, in some in some areas, they were not even attacking. They just forgot to do the attack order. Look at these Thoros Spears. Down to the last man, you must fight. Defend this square. These, these Italian swordsmen, I mean, they're not great. I mean, nine times out of ten when I play with them, they end up breaking and being the first thing to break. But, I mean, they've been pretty damn effective in this. They're pretty quick at flanking around and doing some damage. But um, as a frontline unit, I guess they are pretty awful. You don't really want them to hold the line. And here we go. They're broken. That is... that. They're just going to massacre all them. And there we go. A close victory. I'm not so sure about that. I would have said it's a pretty decisive victory. No uh, offence to the two Macedonian, Macedonian players. You did as well as you could. Some interesting decisions on who to bring to the battle, but we'll look at that quickly here. So, I mean, I think this is a fairly good, um, fair, I don't know what the budget was, but I mean, this is a fairly good army, bringing some shield bearers, Royal Peltas, which unfortunately just got focused down and should have done better, to be honest. Shouldn't have really sent them in first. There's Thoros Spears. I wouldn't have brought so many Thoros Spears myself, but I may have brought some more elite units. Um, and certainly would have brought more missiles. Two slingers is definitely not enough in a multiplayer battle to bring. Um, but I mean, he did fairly well, did uh, Raymond, uh, Ramon Weed, he brought, uh, he lost basically a uh, everything but a thousand men, but killed nearly 900, did okay. Um, Champagne Charlie surprisingly actually did better, um, getting just shy of 1100 kills, but losing a huge amount of his army. Bringing a lot of mercenaries, um, as his title for this battle will probably be the Battle of the Mercenaries. Um, and uh, interesting though on the militia, ho militia hoplites, I presume he spent a lot of money on some of these other units like um, mercenaries. I'm not really sure how expensive they are. Nothing really shouts out to be too expensive. So why he brought militia hoplites? Maybe just to soak up fire, but maybe just bring two. Bring two half that amount. Bring something else instead. But maybe he's learned for another day. But uh, And then we'll quickly look at the victorious side, the coalition forces. Um, so we'll look at Teela here with his army. We have the Hellenic Royal Cavalry. This general nearly getting 300 kills. That's an excellent amount of kills to be getting in battle for cavalry. Clearly done the job. Nearly dying, but it's well worth it. His mercenary cav Italian cavalry aren't the strongest cavalry, but they seem this one here um, getting 112 kills. That is, again, a very good amount of kills to be getting. Um, for a fairly weak cavalry unit, his uh, skirmish cav doing okay as well, getting 82 kills, and his slingers doing excellent, all getting over 100 kills. Um, and then his mercenary Italian swordsmen, which are basically the, I don't know, the MVPs of this of this battle uh, for both sides, getting a solid amount of kills. So we'll quickly look at Butter Funga playing as Carthage. He got uh, quite a lot of kills with his cavalry, nearly 150 here. And just over 100 with those I mercenary Iberian cavalry. His archers doing fairly well, nearly getting 200 kills with some of these Cretan archers and getting uh, plenty of kills with his Libyan infantry, who did very, very solid. They were probably actually some of the most elite infantry on the battlefield in this case. Uh, usually, when playing something against Rome and some of the other stronger infantry factions, these guys get messed up. I mean, in this one, they they took they were the ones messing up people. But um, yeah, so I hope you guys have enjoyed that battle. And if you are new around here, please leave a like and subscribe. Until next time, 
guys. I will see you later.